the Constitution and Bill of Rights during a state of emergency or martial law. As American citizens, you should be aware that many of your rights under the Constitution and Bill of Rights can be completely stripped from you by the stroke of a presidential pen. This video will discuss the extent of those rights, which most citizens consider to be unassailable, and exactly how and when they can be so easily taken away from you. If this sounds interesting to you, then stick around and check it out. Before we get started, just a quick reminder that if you enjoy this content and want to see more, be sure to subscribe to the channel, and then select the notification bell to be notified as soon as I post up new content. The intent of this video is not to scare or to create some kind of panic, it's to merely inform you of just how fragile and how easily removable the rights of American citizens actually are. Everything I will present here is based on federal law and can be easily validated for accuracy and legitimacy. I think that the average citizen is probably completely unaware of just how vulnerable their citizens' rights are. Most Americans grow up believing that they have rights, and no one can violate those rights without the consequence of law and the judicial system, and under normal conditions this holds generally true. There have been laws in the past that have allowed the government to bypass certain citizens' rights for the better good of the nation as a whole. Laws such as the Patriot Act would be an example. But what I'm going to discuss here is a very long-standing and well-established process for the government to be able to completely bypass constitutional law and legally be able to do absolutely anything that they want. The loophole foundation for the government to remove the rights of citizens stems from this excerpt from Article 1, Section 9 of the U.S. Constitution. The privilege of the writ of habeas corpus shall not be suspended unless, when in the case of rebellion or invasion, the public safety may require it. The right of habeas corpus is, in essence, the right to a hearing and lawful imprisonment. So if there's a situation of rebellion or invasion that may threaten public safety, martial law may be invoked removing citizens' rights to a hearing and lawful imprisonment. I'm sure when the Founding Fathers authored this article, they couldn't even conceive the abuses that the government would impose based on this loophole. Later, this was expanded to include a state of emergency because lawmakers found that the status of a state of emergency was a far more broader term that could easily be applied to just about any situation they needed it to. The moment the sitting president declares a national emergency, his powers extend further than normal and he has the capacity to engage within more than a hundred special provisions to him. These provisions include the ability to freeze American bank accounts, shut down various forms of electronic communications, and yes, allow the activation of martial law. The U.S. President and Congress both have the power to declare a nationwide martial law. The federal government can unquestionably suspend constitutional rights under martial law when the public safety is at risk due to a terrorist attack, civil unrest, or a natural disaster. So during a declaration of martial law or state of emergency, the government has the ability to enact certain existing laws and acts that can remove citizens' constitutional rights. One of the biggest fundamental rights that a citizen loses is their Fourth Amendment right to the Constitution, which prohibits the unreasonable search and seizure of a person, their home, and their belongings without a search warrant. For a search warrant to be issued, a probable cause must be established and approved by the Judiciary Court before a person and or their home and belongings are searched. However, when a government operates under martial law, no such Fourth Amendment protections are afforded to you. Without any due process, you can be searched, your car, home, anything, and if anything found is illegal, it can be seized immediately. 
So you might say, no problem, I don't have anything illegal in my car or my home, so they can search all they want. And that might be true under normal conditions. But if there has been invoked a state of emergency, then everything you thought was legal can change. This is due to something called the Anti-Hoarding Act, which came about originally through the Defense Production Act of 1950. Within the Defense Production Act is a section on hoarding of designated scarce materials. It reads, In order to prevent hoarding, no person shall accumulate in excess of reasonable demands of business, personal, or home consumption, or for the purpose of resale at prices in excess of prevailing market prices, materials which have been designated by the President as scarce materials. Basically, if the President places an item and quantity on a federal registry and you are found to have excess, the government can legally search and seize such excess without probable cause for the distribution of your personal supplies to other citizens as the government sees fit. This is the law. This would apply to anything. I mean anything that is placed on that federal registry. Food, water, firearms, ammo, communications devices, fuel, medicines, vehicles, livestock, farm crops, land of any type, commercial, residential, farm, ranch, homestead, it doesn't matter. It can all be legally taken from you without any recourse if it's deemed to be scarce materials and needed for the public good or national defense. Here are some presidential executive orders signed into law under the authority of the Defense Production Act of 1950. In February of 1962, John F. Kennedy signed Executive Order 10998 titled Assigning Emergency Preparedness Functions to the Secretary of Agriculture. In this order, the federal government is given the authority to take over all agricultural production and distribution. It specifies that the Secretary shall also develop plans and procedures for the proper utilization of agriculture items stockpiled for survival purposes. In November of 1988, Ronald Reagan signed Executive Order 12656 titled Assignment of Energy Preparedness Responsibilities. This order gives responsibilities to the federal departments and national security agencies such as preparing plans and procedures to share between and among the responsible agencies resources such as food, supplies, water, and workforce needed to carry out assigned responsibilities and other essential functions, and as well develop plans to set priorities and allocate resources amongst civilian and military claimants. In June 1994, Bill Clinton issued Executive Order 12919, also known as the National Defense Industrial Resources Preparedness which allows the federal government to seize all food and water resources from the public and private sector. The order describes the confiscation of food resources as all commodities and products that are capable of being ingested by either human or animals at all stages of processing. In this order, the confiscation of water resource relates to all usable water from all sources within the jurisdiction of the United States, which can be managed, controlled, and allocated to meet emergency requirements. In March 2012, Barack Obama signed Executive Order 13603, better known as the National Defense Resources Preparedness, which enables the federal government to confiscate and redistribute all potable water, food, and whatever resources are necessary to protect the United States during a state of emergency. FEMA The Federal Emergency Management Agency is an agency of the United States and part of the Department of Homeland Security. Initially created under President Jimmy Carter by a Presidential Reorganization Plan No. 3 of 1978, and implemented by two executive orders on April 1, 1979. FEMA was given many responsibilities including the overseeing of the nation's civil defense, 
the authority for counterterrorism through the Nun Luger Dominici Amendment under the Weapons of Mass Destruction Act of 1996. It should be noted that the Administrator for the Federal Emergency Management reports directly to the Secretary of Homeland Security. FEMA is not an elected body and does not have to involve itself in public disclosures. It has the power to suspend laws, move entire populations, arrest and detain citizens without a warrant, and hold them without trial. It can seize property, food supplies, transportation systems, and can suspend the Constitution. Here are just a few executive orders associated with FEMA that would suspend the Constitution and Bill of Rights. These executive orders have been on record for nearly 30 years and could be enacted by the stroke of a presidential pen. Executive Order 10990 allows the government to take over all modes of transportation and control of highways and seaports. Executive Order 10995 allows the government to seize and control the communication media. Executive Order 10997 allows the government to take over all electrical power, gas, petroleum, fuels, and minerals. Executive Order 10998 allows the government to take over all food resources and farms. Executive Order 11000 allows the government to mobilize civilians into work brigades under government supervision. Executive Order 11001 allows the government to take over all health, education, and welfare functions. Executive Order 11002 designates the Postmaster General to operate a national registration of all persons. Executive Order 11003 allows the government to take over all airports and aircraft, including commercial aircraft. Executive Order 11004 allows the House and Finance Authority to relocate communities, build new housing with public funds, designate areas to be abandoned, and establish new locations for populations. Executive Order 11005 allows the government to take over railroads, inland waterways, and public storage facilities. Executive Order 11051 specifies the responsibility of the Office of Emergency Planning and gives authorization to put all executive orders into effect in time of increased international tensions and economic financial crisis. Executive Order 11310 grants the authority to the Department of Justice to enforce the plans set out in executive orders to institute industrial support to establish judicial and legislative liaison to control all aliens, to operate penal and correctional institutions, and to advise and assist the President. And finally, Executive Order 11921 allows the Federal Emergency Preparedness Agency to develop plans to establish control over mechanisms for the production and distribution of energy sources, wages, salaries, credit, and the flow of money in U.S. financial institutions in any undefined national emergency. It also provides that when a state of emergency is declared by the President, Congress cannot review the action for six months. FEMA's enormous powers can be triggered so easily. Just about any form of domestic problem, such as an economic collapse, civil unrest, drug problems, terrorist attacks, and even protests against America. Any of these events can allow these emergency powers to be enacted. These presidential powers have increased with the 1991 and 1993 crime bills, which increased the power to suspend the rights guaranteed under the Constitution and to seize the property of those suspected of being drug dealers and also the individuals who participate in public protests or demonstrations. 
So there's a law that if you participate in a public protest or demonstration, you're a criminal and you can have your personal property seized. Under the existing emergency plans, FEMA has the power to suspend the Constitution, appoint military commanders to run the state and local governments, order the detention of anyone that there is a reasonable suspicion will engage in or probably conspire with others to engage in acts of espionage or sabotage, and then place them in detention camps without any due process. The bottom line here is awareness. Just be aware that these laws and acts exist and can be enacted at just about any time, especially in today's climate. Does it mean that every law and executive order that the president has at his disposal will all be used? No, but they could. I only want you to know that they do exist so you know what could happen under the most severe circumstances and you can take whatever steps you feel are necessary to prepare for such acts that may take place. Was this information useful to you? Were you aware how easily your constitutional rights can be taken away from you? Let me know in the comment section below. A big thank you for all those who support this channel by watching the entire video, giving it a like, share, and subscribe. It is greatly appreciated. If you're not yet a subscriber, hit the subscribe button, then be sure to select the notification bell to be notified as soon as I post up new content.